In this video, we're going to show you how to create and manage sprites. A sprite is a living entity which will exist in our game. We're going to use the struct to create a data structure to hold our sprite. And so, in our data structure, we have attributes like the X position, which is where in the world is our sprite, its Y position, what it looks like, and rather than storing the whole image into the structure, you can see we're going to just have a pointer to that structure, but this image pointer will then point to what the sprite looks like, whether it's a bunker or an enemy or a missile. And lastly, we have the status of this sprite. And we're going to have a very simple status in this initial demonstration where zero means it's dead and one means it's alive. And so we are going to create this structure by defining a new data type, which has four fields. We define the struct. Next, we're going to create a new type. And this is our sprite type. So a type is like care, long, short, except in this case it's going to create four elements of x, y, pointer, and life. It's an user-defined type. In this initial demo, we're going to create four sprites. And so we're going to create a RAM-based structure of four elements, which we will call the enemy. To manage the enemy, we're going to initialize their position. So we're going to have four, there's one, there's another one, there's a third one, and here is a fourth one. So this is my enemy, my array of sprites. Okay. And I'm going to initialize their position. And so I'm going to set their X position uh, along the row. I'm going to set them so that they occur on the screen in a row. And they're going to preset their Y position to be all in the same spot. So they'll all be next to each other. I'm going to set what they look like. They're all going to look like enemy 30s. And then I'm going to give them life by setting their life parameter to a 1. So when I execute this function, these enemies will come to life. So John, how do I move an enemy from one position to another position? Now, I could access the individual locations by taking the first enemy taking its parameter, and I can move it wherever I want. So if I were to execute this code here, I could set a value here, I could set a value there, and now enemy number zero is now teleported to that location. But rather, I'm going to use this move function, and it turns out, if you look very carefully at the bump image, each enemy has a border, two pixels on the left, two pixels on the right, one pixel on the top, and one pixel on the bottom that are black. So all of these, <clears throat> so all of these sprites, all these images of these sprites have a black border around the edge. This means if I move an enemy two pixels to the left, two pixels to the right, one pixel down or one pixel up, the movement of that enemy will automatically erase where it was. So in this function, I'm going to take all my enemies, 0 through 3, and if the enemy is on the screen, if he's not too far to the right, I'm going to move him to the right. And when this enemy reaches the X position of 72, I will then kill that enemy by making its life equal to zero. So this function, when I call it, will move all four of my enemies uh, to the right until they get to this threshold, in which case then they're going to be uh, killed. 
we have one more operation to write, and that is the one that actually renders the image. This function is going to be called inside our main loop. Again, this function should be called at 30 hertz inside the main loop. And to draw all of the sprites onto a single image, I will begin by clearing the buffer, clearing the screen buffer. This is the array in RAM. And then, one by one, if the enemy is alive, if the enemy has life, that will draw the image associated with that enemy at the position of where they exist. And that's the threshold that we've been using all along. So this one element here will draw the enemy onto the screen. And then this one will draw that enemy. And then this one will draw that one and that one. So the four enemies will be drawn into the array, which is located in RAM. And it's not till this display function that this RAM buffer is then punched out to the screen. So what we've sh shown you is just an example of how to manage the sprites, how to, how to declare them, how to uh, move them, how to draw them. So this is just a, an idea that you can base your own game on. So let's look at how this idea is put together in a simple main program. Okay. So here we have a main program. Uh, let's load it in. Let's, build, let's compile it. Oops. Okay. Let's compile it. Build. Download. Debug. So let's step over this main program and see what it does. Okay. Uh, step over, step over. Okay. So again, the Nokia init will initialize the hardware of the display. The init function that we just wrote will then place all of my sprites into the structure. So I'll have my four enemies that are created. This will only put them in the screen buffer. Now this doesn't even put them in the screen buffer. This puts them into the array of enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is going to take the enemy. Well, let's step into this one. Step into. Okay. Step over. Uh, here we displayed. <clears throat> here we cleared the buffer. And now one by one, I'm going to put the enemies into the screen buffer. Two. Three. Four. And now when I execute this one, we see that the enemies are on the screen. The four enemies near the top, all on the same row. All right, keep stepping. Step, uh, step over. And now the main loop is going to move the enemies. Now again, when I move the enemies, the screen doesn't change because I just moved their properties. But when I draw it, they now move. Yes, they have. All right, let's move them again. Oh, let's just hit the go button because you can see that this movement will occur 10 times a second. Uh, and so you'll actually be able to see them jump on the screen. So let's push go. So now you see the enemies move over. And when they get to the end of the screen, they fall into the abyss. Their life is set to zero and there are uh, no more enemies now. So the interesting thing as we see here is the loop is still running, but there's nothing to draw because we only draw when their life is uh, not a zero. Absolutely. All right. 